Hello, this is Steve from ACCAAPC.com. So the question we're going to look at is the question two from the June 2010 your P7 exam. So let's have a look at this requirement then. Um, this question is all about the stage number three of your audit. We're going to put your theory into this particular question. So uh, professional marks will be awarded in respect of the part D. Okay, so which means part A, part B and part C, we don't have to write in professional way, which means we don't have to use a specific format for this. So requirements, so for part A then, evaluate the benefits specific, you can see here, specific to the company, specific to the information that the examiner has given to you, of outsourcing is the internal audit function. So what does that mean? Well, we've got the internal audit function within our businesses, but now I'm not going to do that, but rather I'm going to outsource it to maybe KPMG to do that for me. Is that good or bad? What do you think? Well, of course, you can argue it's good because for the KPMG, maybe he may have many experts than we do. Yes? Internal auditors are not cheap. To employ the internal auditor or just to outsource it, uh, done by someone else, of course, maybe it will be cheaper. Yes? So, these are sort of points you can comment on in the exam, okay, for part A then. But in the question, it says specific to the macro company. You need to point out that maybe that there is some problems currently exist in the macro's company. So, that's why the macro company is going to outsource its internal audit function rather than bring that in house. Okay, so for part B then, explain the impact on the external audit of MACO if the decision is taken to outsource its internal audit function. What does that mean? Well, I said to you in the early study, for the external auditor, their aim is to try to express their audit opinion on true and fairness of the financial statements. How are they going to do that? They have six stages. So one of the stages will be assessing the internal control systems of the client's company. If internal audit function is outsourced, which may mean that maybe the internal control systems of the client's company may improve. So from that perspective, from the external auditor's perspective, do we have to still you know, walk through the systems uh, 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 much more in detail. But the answer is maybe no. So from that perspective, of course, it will reduce the work that is done by the external auditor and hence reduce the audit fee charged as well. So these are sort of points you can comment on. It's four marks, which means we need to write four points in relation to that. Part C then is to recommend the procedures that could be used by your firm to quantify the uh, financial losses suffered by the company as a result of fraud. So we need to look at what type of frauds there are for actually uh, take on in actions. So four marks, four points. Part D then, prepare a report presented to Dana and Ste uh, Danny and Stella, in which you compare, firstly, compare the responsibilities of the external auditor and the management in relation to prevention and protection of fraud. Of course, from the external auditor's perspective, the aim is to try to express their audio opinion, not to try to detect and prevent the fraud. But for the management, their primary responsibility is to set up a sound internal systems so that to prevent and detect the fraud. But if the fraud will lead to a material misstatement onto the financial statements, of course, the external auditor will need to you know, quantify those amounts before actually modifying his audio report and require the management to correct it. So part two then, assess the benefits and drawbacks for the MACO in establishing an audit committee. So you see here, all of these uh, theory bits, uh, you know, quite theory bits, are relating to the scenario. So remember, in the P7 exam, you need to relate your theory into the scenario, okay? If you fail to do that, of course, your answer will not be uh, very good. So uh, what's the benefits of Establishing an audit committee, of course, it will be more professional. Yeah, audit committees are experts uh, from you know outside. Uh, that will be good, and it will be a fresh blood into the company. We try to oversee the performance of the uh, management, 
And the audit committee, of course, uh, it can cooperate with the internal and external audit team during the work. And also any uh, fraud or mistakes that the management has made, of course, report to the audit committee and require those management to correct it. Of course, these are sort of uh, benefits, but what about the drawbacks? Well, one of the drawbacks I can, I can comment on is that the audit committee will be quite expensive because you know, within the audit committee, all of them are experts, to be frank with you, so it is not cheap to set up this audit committee. So, audit committee, you know, quite usually is you know, set up in the listed companies. So, for a private company, uh, it's very expensive for them. So, um, yeah, this is the basic idea of uh, the requirements. So, uh, just to give, give you uh, a flavour here, so part A, we're going to talk about uh, outsourcing the internal audit function's benefit and part B uh, is impact onto the external audit if internal audit function was outsourced part C is about fraud and part D is about report okay so let's have a read through the scenario okay before actually moving it further so Matco is a large private company whose business activities in its immense management Involving the organization of conferences, meetings, and celebratory events for companies. Matco was founded 10 years ago by Danny and Stella, who still owns the majority of the shares of the company. The company has grown rapidly and now employs more than 150 staff in 20 offices. You are a uh, manager in the business advisory department of the Flat Ginkgo. Your firm has been engaged to provide the internal audit service to the Matco. Okay. Uh, in your initial conversation with Daniel Stella, you discover that currently there's a small internal audit team. Okay, so it's the intern small internal audit team. You may try to imply that well, uh, the audit team is just to be one or two persons, and you know all of them part qualified. They're small. Maybe the recommendations are not adhered to by the management later on, or maybe uh, in some circumstances that uh, there's not there are not enough time for those two guys to try to perform the internal audit services for the company. So that's why when trying to outsource your internal audit function, this will be one of the benefits. Okay, you can argue that in the exam. I'm not going to do that right now. So let's read through the rest of the scenario first. So this audit team is under the supervision of the Lindsay, uh, a recently qualified accountant, so you can see here. She was recently qualified. So from that perspective, well maybe it's a lack of practical experience to actually do the audit. So in the real world actually, uh, to be an internal auditor, you, you should have at least uh, uh, three years of experiences. Okay? This is a minimum. Otherwise, uh, you can't perform the internal audit work uh, properly. So, say. so most of the internal auditors are from the external audit firms. Uh, you know, external auditors. So once they've you know, work for as an external auditor, they're going to jump to another firms, uh, jump to another company to become an internal auditor. So yeah, reasonably qualified. Well, of course, lack of experience to try to identify any of these ineffective, inefficient internal audit systems, uh, internal audit procedures within a company. So can't do the. Uh, uh, internal audit work properly. So, yeah, if you comment on the exam, then one of the benefits you can argue. Before heading up the internal audit department, Lindsay was a junior finance manager of the company. Uh, it seems to me, yeah, it's good. The members of the internal audit team will be reassigned to the roles of it to the finance department once your firm has has, be, uh, has begun the uh, provision of the internal audit services. So, what what do I mean by that? Is well, if I'm going to, you know, the company is going to outsource. It's the internal audit function to my firm. So from that perspective, Lindsay will not be the head of the internal audit department anymore. They, she will be reassigned to the roles of the finance manager, uh, which seems to me, well, it's good. Because, well, if I'm going to use Lindsay to concentrate on the internal audit work, well, it is a waste of resource, yeah? Because uh, she loves fi finance, maybe. Uh, she was a finance, financial manager, that would be good. So what I'm going to do is that well, I'm going to use the best resources. So I'm going to outsource the internal audit function and then reassign you to the finance department to do the work more properly. So from that perspective, I can argue that, well, this will be one of the advantages in the part A. 
So how are we going to write it down in the exam then? So you can see here, after outsourcing, the internal the function that wrote the financial manager will be reassigned to you know, the finance department, which will benefit the company overall by having such extra resources uh, to do the work more properly. Okay then, so let's have a look at the next paragraph then. So Matco is not an assistant client of your firm. It's a game for the understanding of the company you held a meeting with the lead, say. So we've got the notes uh, detailing about the you know, findings from the lead, say. So firstly, so first paragraph, the internal audit team has three employees, including lead, say, reports to the finance director, okay? So you report to the finance director. So, so from that perspective, so any uh, fraud and errors that you found uh, resulting from the finance director, you report to him, of course, he's not happy with that. So he may sack you, or maybe he will cover up his fraud again. So from that perspective, setting up an audit committee uh, will be quite necessary, okay? Will be quite necessary. So this can be included in your uh, answer in your D part two, okay? So uh, we should report to the audit committee rather than report to the finance director, okay? So let's see how we're going to write it down in the exam then. So the benefits, is that this will overall uh, improve the internal auditor systems if the uh, internal auditor is going to report to the uh, audit committee rather than the finance director because for the finance director you may refuse to uh, adopt your recommendations or adopt your, your findings, uh, recommendations, etc. to improve the systems later on. Okay, so uh, let's read through the next sentences then. The other two internal auditors are currently studying their professional examination, so they may lack experience to do the internal audit work. So you can argue by setting up this particular, uh, no, no, but not by setting up, it is the outsourcing the internal audit function to an external audit firm, of course, this will benefit from having enough, uh, even other expertise to do the work. So you can argue that. Second point in the part A. Because currently there are two internal auditors within the company, they're not qualified, so uh, by, outsourcing the uh, by outsourcing the function, of course, uh, this will improve the overall internal audit quality as well. Okay, so let's have a read through the next one. Uh, the human centre two years ago initially focused on introducing financial controls across all of the MacCo's offices. So what does that mean is, well, we're going to perform the bank reconciliation start kind of thing, yeah. Nine months ago, the finance director uh, instructed the team to focus the attention on introducing the operational controls okay, in order to achieve cost savings uh, due to a cash flow problem being suffered by a company. So what does that mean, uh, what does that mean by operational controls? It's similar, like uh, when we try to purchase the raw material, uh, it should be authorised by a particular manager, by a particular purchasing manager before I actually purchase it. Maybe we need to purchase in bulk discounts, that kind of thing. So we're going to introduce, uh, you're trying to introduce some operational controls in order to reduce the business risks that the company is facing, i.e. to achieve cost savings. So uh, from that perspective, because you're going to focus the attention onto this particular area, not that area, but there are only three guys over here. So how likely that you're going to uh, do these things uh, using three guys in a, such a large company, although it's a private private company. But you know, you can argue that by outsourcing its internal audit function, of course, we have many resources rather than just these three guys to actually do the audit services, uh, do the internal control uh, in internal audit services. Okay, so you can argue that's in your part A. So focus. The third point, it seems that the team currently lacks uh, a consistent focus there, directed by the finance director who has changed the focus from the uh, financial bit to the operational bit. It seems that the team is too small to do both. Outsourcing will provide as many staff as necessary to cover up a range of activities. Okay, It's all about the fees. Even though uh, increase the uh, number of staff by the external audit firm, that would be a no problem, that would be no problem I should say, because it would charge you a higher amount of fees. 
But uh, if you want to do it uh, on your own, of course, you need to increase the number of staff, but is that possible? Well, the answer is maybe no, okay? So even though you increase the fees for the hourly rate, but you know, it doesn't give you the same result as you say, it's a very satisfactory result as you say. So let's have a look at the next one, uh, is that the team does not have time to perform such testing of the financial or operational controls because you need to walk through the systems uh, uh, line by line, uh, you know, according to the rules uh, within your company. Trust me, this is not an easy job. And if that is the case, because it says, well, the team does not have time to do such works. So one of the benefits to trying to outsource your internal function, of course, uh, you can have many time, much time to do that. Okay, next one. So you can argue that this will be part of your answer for here. Okay, time. Because currently there are two auditors within the client's company, and uh, so outsourcing internal audit function will have extra resources to focus on other areas of the company. Okay, so yeah, this is it. Have more time to do that as well. So read through the rest of it. In the course of their work, Lindsay finds many instances of management policies not being adhered to, and the managers of each location are generally reluctant to introduce the controls as they want to avoid bureaucracy and paperwork. As a result, Lindsay's recommendations are always uh, 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 often ignored. So from that perspective, by setting up this particular audit committee in a part D number two, it will be a benefit uh, to the company because, well, by setting up this particular uh, committee, uh, uh, it can make sure that all of the recommendations are are implemented properly, okay? But you know, in this case, because Lindsay is just a junior manager, how likely that everyone in the other department will listen to her recommendations while well, trying to sacrifice their benefits consistently? But the answer is no way. So, from that perspective, of course, this will be one of the uh, advantages in the part D over here, okay? Because all the committee will have more power and more and state is not like Lindsay just to senior manager, so make, make the other managers uh, to try to adopt their recommendations more easily later on. Okay then, so next paragraph is about the part C, it's about the fraud, and how we're going to quantify the fraud. So let's have a look at what's what. So three weeks ago, Lindsay discovered a fraud operating at one of the offices while reviewing the procedures relating to the uh, one of the procedures relating to the approval of the new suppliers and payments made to the suppliers. The fraud involved an accountant manager over here authorizing payments of the invoices received from the fictitious supplier. What does that mean? Well, this is the account manager. Okay. So before that, what is the supplier? Supplier is supplying us the goods to the customer. And then from the customer point of view, we need to pay to that supplier. Okay, so this is the concept. And in this case, I'm an account manager. I'm going to create a fictitious, a fake supplier over here, pretending that I'm a customer, so that from the account manager's perspective, I'm going to pay a money from the company to those fictitious or fake suppliers. What if that supplier's bank account would be the same as the account manager, which may mean that the account manager is stealing the money from the company to pay into his own pocket. Quite smart, isn't it? So let's have a look at it. With payments actually made into the accounts manager's personal account. So from that perspective, of course this will be a fraud happen. The accounts manager is, is committing a fraud. It's trying to steal the asset from the company into his own pocket. Okay, so Lisa reported the account manager to the finance director and the manager was immediately removed from the office. This situation has highlighted to Stanley and Stella that something needs to be done to improve the uh, controls within their organisations. Okay, right. Uh, before that, I'd like to look at the requirement again for the part C. Is to try to recommend processes that should be firm, uh, to be used to your firm by your firm, to quantify. So here, just to quantify the losses, nothing more. Okay, you are not required to do other work, but just to quantify 
the losses. You need to establish how much money you have lost as a result of this fraud. What you can do? Well, of course, you can look back to your answer here. For the part C, firstly, we can do something inquiring with the pol uh, police, okay, and also insurance policy, uh, and try to uh, try to establish firstly whether or not the amounts uh, can be reimbursed, okay, to a client's company, to the macro. And secondly, if the insurance co policy has covered this particular situation, of course, the losses can be. Uh, are reimbursed as well. And thirdly, you're going to compare a list of unproved suppliers to a list of actually approved suppliers by the company to try to identify the discrepancies between the two. So for example, we've got the suppliers here with 500, 500 and five, uh, 600. So from the company's perspective, this supplier one and two is the genuine supplier, uh, thus exist and it is the actual supplier. But for the third one, for the first supplier with the amount of 600, which is unapproved supplier, and the spend details will be the same as the account manager. So by comparing the companies with the actual one, of course we can identify they're just to be the third supplier that is unapproved. So from that perspective, we can further establish how much losses we're going to suffer, especially, uh, uh, for example, is to be 600 in this case. Okay, so this is the idea behind this one. And part D then, uh, no, it's the next point, is that use computerized and systemic auditing techniques to identify the supplies with the same bank account to the accountant's manager. So what does that actually mean is, we need to try to identify whether or not those suppliers' bank accounts will be the same as the account manager. And if this is the case, of course, it may imply that this particular supplier is a fake or unapproved supplier. We can quantify that amount as well, okay? Because supplier, we haven't paid for him. We're going to uh, debit the income statement and credit the payable. So we need to look at that payable uh, before it actually turns into the cash payment, okay? So, uh, that's why we're going to do that. So what do I mean by computerized assisting auditing techniques is that we're going to use some sort of uh, uh, computerized programs to try to search for uh, uh, whether or not they, uh, you know, the accounts manager's bank account will be the same as the supplier's bank account. We're going to search for the, uh, the numbers uh, within the accounts manager's bank account. So. Uh, ju 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 just to you know, use the computer to quickly search for whether or not they will be the same as the other one. Okay, so this is the one of the uh, you know, computerized program we can use in the in the real world. Okay, that be no problem. Okay, so we finish off uh, this one, and then we're going to look at the next paragraph. Then we finish off part C. Let me take a tick. Part A and part C finish off. Okay, so next one. Then is there uh, considering taking legal action against the MacCo's external audit firm, the Houghton and Co, because their audit procedures did not review the fraud. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, this will be relating to your answer in your part D, number one. Is it the responsibility of the external auditors to try to detect and prevent the fraud? But well, the answer is no, they're not uh, going to do that. Because their primary objective is to try to express their opinion on the true fairness of the financial statement. Okay? So, yeah, that's it. Um, going to look at part D number one together. By setting up this report, uh, yeah, you can use this format to report to content, uh, audit committees, introductions, uh, you know. Yeah, set up a, li a little bit of an introduction, of course. You can use another format to from base subject, introduction, actual content, and the final paragraph for the conclusion. So let's have a look at the, the part one then. So, responsibilities of the external auditor and management, okay, relating to detection and prevention of fraud. Firstly, management is responsible for setting up the internal control systems to prevent fraud and the management should assess 
the internal control systems uh, continuously. And Auditor is responsible for the uh, true unfairness of the financial statements opinion. But if the fraud happened within the company, they are material to the FS, of course, uh, the auditors would focus more on the fraud impact onto the accounts rather than its operational issues, rather than who committed the fraud, but rather we should focus upon the actual amount as well. Auditor will assess the internal control systems uh, during the stage number three rather than continuously. So uh, when talking about, when trying to uh, you know, form your answer into this particular requirements, you can talk about, we've got two persons over here, we've got the management, we've got the auditor, and the management is responsible for the internal control systems but the auditor is responsible for the opinion. But if the fraud actually uh, happened, uh, it's material to the FS, of course, focus upon the amount, okay, rather than its operational issues. And for internal control systems, the management will you know, review the internal control systems continuously. But rather, uh, for the auditor, it's only in the stage number three of your audit flowchart. Okay, so this finishes off our part D number one then. So part, uh, next paragraph, then is there are deciding where to set up, set up an audit committee under the regulatory framework, which is not operates. MAC is not required to have uh, an audit committee uh, by disclosure. Now to explain where the audit committee is being established is required in the annual report. We can argue that one of the benefits of setting up the audit committee would increase the uh, shareholders' confidence, okay, relating to the investment into this particular company. Because, you know, uh, from the corporate governance perspective, when you're trying to, you're a shareholder, when you're trying to invest your money into this company, you're not hoping that your money will be stolen by the business, but rather they can be used up, you know, effectively by the businesses and they generate uh, a large amount of return to you. So that's why uh, you're going to disclose that all the committees set up in your company will be uh, you know, give more confidence to the shareholders as a result. Okay, so you can argue that. So let's finish off the part B and also part D number two then. So part B then. Part B I just say to you in our uh, theory bits of our study, which is quite easy. According to the ISO 402, of course, when you're trying to outsource your uh, internal audit function will have an impact on the external auditor. Firstly, on to its audit strategy. Because if after outsourcing this internal audit function that the internal audit system that the clients can play will actually improve maybe. So the external audit firm will rely on the internal audit systems rather than doing the full substantive testing. And this will reduce the fees that is charged to the client's company because we don't have to spend uh, as many hours as we can to try to audit this company, but rather we're going to rely on the systems, do limited amounts of substantive testing as a result. Secondly, if the working papers uh, can be assessed by the uh, outsourcing work, uh, uh, assessable by if the outsourcing firms, you know, when we are trying to uh, uh, do the audit services, internal audit services for this particular client's company, and our audit working papers can be accessible by the external auditor and this will reduce the work that is done by the external auditor and hence reduce the fees charged as a result. Of course if the internal control system changes and this will impact on the amount of work that is done by the audit firm and hence will impact on the fees as well. Okay, Because after outsourcing the uh, internal audit function of course maybe the internal control systems of that company is actually improved. And finally, if the external auditor relies on the type 2 reports producing by, uh, by our internal audit firms, which is uh, uh, where the client's company is outsourced its internal audit function to our company, as a result of that, if they are going to do so, this will decrease the workload and hence the fees charged as well. So the simple idea behind the type 1 report and type 2 report is that a type 1 report just talks about the internal control systems. Type 2 reports not just talking about the internal control systems, but also talking about whether or not these internal control systems is good or bad. 
it's efficient or not efficient. It's effective or not effective in what area. Okay, so yeah, that's it. The key to this question is to try to look at and uh, try to focus on uh, whether or not this will be, uh, uh, you know, saving time, saving money, and hence reducing the audit fees, etc. Okay, so we're focusing on part D number two, audit committee drawbacks. Firstly, it's very difficult to recruit the staff uh, who are independent and also, uh, you know, have relevant skills. So. Uh, you know, most of the circumstances that the uh, person will not be independent uh, after you're working for the company, yeah, you're colluding with the management to make more profit and make more money. So anyway, so yeah, this is one common take in common time. And secondly, it's quite expensive, okay, to try to recruit this kind of expert into the audit committee. Okay, so we've solved this overall question, very interesting one. The question two from the June 2010 exam.